277. Let's go. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. And without all contradictions, the less is blessed of the better. And else will say, and without question, the person who has the power to give a blessing is greater than the one who is blessed. <laughs> I want to talk to you about tap into the blessing. If you came for first service in the morning, you understand it better. And without question, the person who has the power to give a blessing, the one who gave somebody a car, the one who gave somebody money to pay rent, somebody to buy a house, the one who blessed, is more powerful than the one who was blessed. And without contradiction, the King James will say, give me the King James. It's, it's, it is Something you cannot argue with, but sometimes foolish people argue with. And with that, all, all, all contradictions, the less is blessed by the better. Let me tell you something here. He, um, Ephesians chapter 4 7, in the morning I dealt with it a bit, so I'm go deeper. The Bible said that each of us is given a gift, and with each gift is given a measure of grace. Every gift. Let's read. But unto every one of us is giving grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. No matter what is it that in life, eh? two women are beautiful, but one is married, one is single. It is called more grace. Two people have certificate, degree. One is the boss, one is the messenger. What is the difference? You see, he said, the gift. We all have been giving gifts. But the measure of how far you have gone is determined not by the gift, but the grace you operate in. Master, I preach. Oh, some pastors preach. But if you see them, you see that they've gone far. I see Bishop Adeboye. He has 40,000 branches. In Nigeria alone. Not church. Oh, not church members. Oh, 40,000 branches. You can preach the same Hebrews 7.7. 7. He's also preaching Hebrews 7.7. 7. Say what he's saying. He will say the same thing. But the difference between me, what I'm saying, and what he's saying is that there's a grace at a level he's operating in that I'm not operating in. I have word of knowledge. He has word of knowledge. But his grace is held at me. Then the question, how do you get this grace? God resisted the proud and gave it more grace to the humble. So when God wants to give you grace, he humbles you. Sometimes for what to he embarrasses you. <laughs> <laughs> he makes it look like you are nothing. But not the problem with the average believer. We think that with the gift, with our beauty, with our acumen, with our look, there are people who can play football than Messi and Ronaldo. Some people, if you watch them, the way they can put the football on their neck and roll it and roll it and roll it. I was wondering if people have the ball on their neck. If you try to use your hand to kick his foul, if you try to use your leg, it's foul. The ball can be on their neck. They will walk like this uh -huh, and go and score. If you kick them, it's foul. Because neck here is not foul. The ball can be on their neck, they will walk. If you go higher than here, it is foul. Attempting to commit foul, it is foul. But they never play anything because they don't have grace. People think that, look, you can be, I've seen people whose parents left them properties and they became poor. And I've seen people whose parents left them nothing and they became rich. Because it is the blessings of the Lord that maketh a man rich. Not your gift. Two people can have an opportunity. 
and yet one will go through and one will go behind. And you are like, I'm, I'm better. You no, know, no. The race is not the swift. The battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor favor to men of skill. But time and chance happens to them all. So then, it is not of him that will it, nor of him that ran it, but it is God that showed mercy. God said, Jacob, have I loved, and if so, have I hated. May God love you, why? They said God loves all of us the same. I beg to differ. If like, let us all in this same environment live. People have testimony, some will have nothing. But God died for all of us. For God so loved the world. Read the full version. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son because that whosoever believeth, <laughs> there's a condition that believe in should not perish. So if you are not part of the believing, you are not part of the whosoever. The whosoever is a condition. You must have a believing spirit. <laughs> Many people don't know that in every time God wants to take you to the left, he has a way of humbling you. He makes sometimes your enemies laugh at you. Because the only place he can lift you up is where you're present, where your enemies are. He prepares the table where your enemies are located. You two are burning and binding that all your enemies should die. Where should the table be placed? There's an anointing that doesn't work until you have enemies. It's called the anointing upon. There's anointing. There is the Holy Spirit that is with you. There's the Holy Spirit that is in you. But the, anoint, the Holy Ghost upon you doesn't come until there is trouble. But we've been sent to church to pray. Every trouble, every trouble, worry me, worry me, die by fire. No, the doctor is rich because he's solving problems. You don't solve problems. You are praying against problems. How will you be rich? People who solve problems are the people who are making it in life. Not people who are jumping problems. Instead of you praying, God, give me wisdom to solve their problem. You want people to die? Oh, yes, there is a place for people to die. But if your enemies die, eh? you see, I, I feel like if you make it in life and your hometown people don't see you, you don't feel good. When you make it in life and you see your classmates, the feeling is different. Because they know where you are coming from. They know that you were the one that was in the class of 35 and you were number 33. And they wonder what has happened to you that today you are the boss and they are bringing their certificate for employment. And here we are. You know something? People don't chase blessing. In the morning, I did, I dared with honor. People don't chase blessing. These days, people love to work hard than chase blessing. Actually, we go to church not for blessing. I said something. If you leave church and you are not transformed, you are entertained. It was not church. It's a club. I even wanted to do something. Because of you, I couldn't. I wanted to put something on my Facebook today. That tell me what happened to you in church that has made you better. If there is nothing you learned today in church, then you should not have been in the church. It's, it's true. You don't look. I believe in falling. If you like try, I'll let you fall now. Falling is the easiest thing. But it's not about the falling. There is something that goes beyond that. It is called grace, gracias. Grace. And the Bible said, grace is a person. Jesus is grace and truth. Grace is what gives you access. When Paul went to God and was talking, God, I have a problem. I have a weakness. This weakness is troubling me. God, take it from me. Take it from me. God said, hey, hey, I'm not taking it. My grace is sufficient. Grace is what makes the enemy shut up. They are complaining about you. They, they say you are some way. But God says, I love him the way he is. I am blessing him. You do the talking as I do the blessing. So if you read your Bible, you see Two people, Jacob and Esau. You see, sometimes I've seen the Bible, people who know how to steal blessing. I mean, I'm one of them. I am a thief of blessing. Just like you have the thief of Baghdad. 
You know, the less is blessed by the great. Let me tell you this here. Anybody who easily gets things done that you can't get done has a grace that you must connect yourself to. Look, there are some people, if you kiss them, they'll get pregnant. They are so fertile. You don't need to sleep with them. Kiss, they are pregnant. Some people wear dress to shape their body. Nobody calls them. Some wear fru. They are calling them. Some have their CV. They put it there. They say, go away. Somebody also goes there. They say, who are you? Say, my father is. Is Daniel here, the Nigerian? Is Daniel the Nigerian here? He came to me. He said he wants a shop. He went to the person at the market area. The person said, he will not give it to him. I said, go and tell the person at the market that your pastor, me. I said, she give it to you. Then he asked me, does the woman come? I said, I don't know her. <laughs> but just go and tell her that I say she'll give it to you. They have given it to him. And he's used his death over one year. And he's saying he's negotiating to buy it. I said, you are wise. Where is he? Is that near here? What am I talking you see, sometimes grace is who you know. Grace is who you know. Some people don't struggle. You, you have friends. Anytime you work with them, people call them and they will propose. They will never call you. Instead of you going to your friend and giving your friend a seed and kneeling down for your friend to bless you, you are jealous and bitter. Oh, no, no shame. Because, you see, you don't know that the person is operating. The thing you are praying for, some people don't pray for. They just get. <laughs> that is what we call grace. Oh. They don't struggle. Hey, my, bra, bra, bra. This is my son. I wrote a book before him. He wrote a book years ago. I told him he's my son. I kept the book for how many years? I said, you won't, you won't launch it. He printed the book without my permission. How many years did the book remain in my room? You, you couldn't launch it. You forgot it. You didn't write it. I told you to hold on. I stopped the book. Now one day he said, start the book. How many books do you have? 70. You have 40. And you have 70. Wait. Don't, don't, don't lie. How much do you make from your books a month? On just Amazon. Minimum of 5,000. Me, my own. The highest I get is 80 pesos. Oh, 80, no. 80, 80, no. I said 80. 8, 8 dollars. I can't work with this So I, I recently called some people that, you know what, I want you to go to him and he will teach you how to do the thing. So that me to my book yourself. He's my son. But he has some grace. You see, the thing about life is that God will place people around you who are blessed by your arrogance and your pride. God resisted the proud but give us more, more. The, the, the seed of pride is resistant. Anybody, anytime you see that people resist you, people don't come near you. Your seed is pride. The seed of pride, the, the, the harvest of pride is resistance. God resists the proud. So when you are proud, naturally you are resisted. But I have come to see that in this world, anything I need is around me. I just have to open my eyes. Somebody around me is blessed with something I don't have. There's something we call if you can't beat them, join them. You can fast 21 days dry, you have ulcer, you won't get it. Unless, unless the people themselves. Sometimes you must be foolish with them and say, can, you, can I have your socks? So what for? Oh, I just want to wear your socks. Even witches know how to take our things to the shrine to destroy us. <laughs> Even witches. Years ago, she, she, she took up my socks from my office and sent it to her father who had stroke. Put it on the father. By morning, the man was working. The father is a Muslim. Wore, wore the socks by money was working. Ah, 
You, you know what is grace? People don't. When anybody has grace, when they sleep and they wake up, they don't need to pray. They have, look at some say, do you have some grace? What the person say? Take your seat. To everyone is giving. To everyone, everyone. Look at some. Say, I have some gift, but I need grace for the gift to come to the fore. If you go and say someone is giving apostles, prophets, teachers, for the equipment of things, for the work of the ministry. Let me tell you this. One thing you should know that God will never bless you from heaven until man has blessed you. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, God has blessed us with spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Master, have you gone to heaven before? So let me teach you something. Abraham, this scripture about the less is blessed by the great. It was Abraham that was referring to. God had always been telling Abraham, I have blessed you. I have blessed you. I have blessed you. One day Abraham gives tithe. As long as he gave tithe, God had to become like Mekisadak, a man. And meet Abraham. After, and said, let me bless you. He said that I, I give you the dew of heaven. He blessed Abraham. Abraham was blessed. Why? Because you, if no man will lay hands and impart, you can obtain a certain grace. You know the problem with us? I know people who are still in the forest. In a chair, mountain. Yeah, anointing, anointing. Let me tell you, anointing is either by blood, hereditary, or by hands laying. Not by prayer. Prayer and fasting generates the impartation you have received. So when Abraham gave tithe, and in Genesis 14, Mekisadek, the priest of God, of course Hebrews 7 tells about Mekisadek, laid hands on him and blessed him. And said, Abraham, I make you the possessor of heaven and earth. Your seed will possess the gates of their enemies. Why didn't God let what he has told Abraham for years remain? God needed a pre ephanic appearance of Jesus like a human being in the Old Testament to lay hands on Abraham, the father of faith and declare certain things. And most often when the devil wants your blessing to elude you, he makes the person who carries you the blessing that will give you the grace to become your enemy. And anything you despise, you can't have. I repeat it. Anything you despise. Now, if you want to understand that one, go to the first service. I thought about honor. Anything you don't value will not be valuable to you. So Jesus could not do much in his own hometown. Because they said he's a carpenter's son. I call it something in the coast. So what born? One plus one, see 20. You have failed all matter. This is your friend. He doesn't learn mass. <coughs> he doesn't learn English. He is always passing. And you think that person is your enemy. The two of you are passing, they call one person and that's the person in the car. Mm. <coughs> I know someone, as soon as you heard that lady said, someone gave a part, wait a minute, you see your head. You see, to you, when you see any rich man, this one is cocaine. Oh, this one is juju. So your brain reads someone. When you sit in the seat of discomfort, you don't get blessed. Blessed is the man that works not in the if you have wrong people advising you, you don't get blessed. Bless the man that worked not in the counsel of the ungodly. Number two, if you stand in the way of sinners, you don't get blessed. If you sit in the seat of the scornful, don't sit around people who scorn what you wish you have. If you don't clap, I suspect you, you are a scorner. Listen, the Bible said in Proverbs, cast out the corner, contention, strife, and quarrel shall live. If you have these three characters, forget it, you don't get blessed. I had a man of God teach this thing. And Friday, those of you who came here, I taught you that this man of God was preaching like this. In the midst of the administration, the wife left. 
When the man got to me, told the wife was angry. When he went, the wife had cooked some special meal at the dining table. Table set. The man and the family were suffering. The pastor was imparting to church members. The church members were prospering, but the man himself and his wife and children were suffering. The woman got wise, went home and cooked a special meal. And when the husband came and was eating, the woman came to kneel down and said, my pastor, bless me. My house is poor. We are not making it. And the man of God said, all of a sudden, an anointing came on him. He laid hands on the woman and they started breaking through. Let me tell you this. Grace doesn't come on buffoons. God doesn't cast his spells before swines. Me, my wife, she so seized for me and I chop. As I was telling you that I had Pastor Charles from Ebola also so seized. You see, there are some people, they do business, it succeeds fast. They do, you, you do business, it doesn't succeed. Wisdom should tell you that that person should be your friend. On his birthday, buy him something. That is wisdom. So why, why are you, bought, oh, I just bought it for you. I like you. Then he says, oh, God bless you. <laughs> the person doesn't even know what he said. He said, God bless you. When people dash meetings, anything I use, anytime I use it, I bless them. And when people dash me, anytime I use it, I speak a word over them. Am I teaching you something here? Am I teaching you something here? Is it practical enough? Jacob and Esau, thank God their father was blind. Their mother was listening. And her father says he wants to bless Israel. Israel is a bad person. The woman said to him, you see, the blessing doesn't know personality. Yo. Blessing knows obedience, humility, and how sharp you are. The guy, Jacob, his father, his mother said, I know your father very well. I know his best man. Let the guy go to the bush and start struggling in life. There's a goat here. I'll cook one. Your father likes pepper soup. Did the pepper soup for this guy. The son said, if I go and he touches me, he said, I'm not Esau, because Esau has a lot of uh, um, hair. He said, I'll give you the, the dress of your, your brother, and I'll give you the, the goat's hair. You wear it. The guy went, knelt down. The man ate the food. He said, what is your name? He said, I'm Esau. He said, your voice sounds like Jacob. But when I touch you, it's like Esau. The man was confused, but he said, I bless you. I bless you in corn and wine. You will increase. And then as soon as Jacob got this thing, he left the house. Esau came crying. You didn't leave one blessing for me. What? Jacob left the cattle ranch. He left the house. He left everything for his brother. And the thing they gave him for diary, he was going and Jacob even chased him on the mountain. And when Esau chased him on the mountain. And when Esau saw that the, the booty and thing was going with his water gallon, everything had come down. He looked at him and said, you would die in the water. I don't even have to chase you. In the night, you didn't have a place to sleep. He slept on a stone and he got the blessing. He said, look where you are sitting. It's where your father, Abraham, the blessing on your head, it, your father Isaac gave it to you. But Isaac got it from Abraham. And this blessing will come upon you and your generation. And he saw to a, he, Jacob was smart. He didn't get up. He took oil. Where did he get oil from in the wilderness? It came by hard work. But he had to crush olives in the day and get oil and pour it there. Hard work. And said, God, if you would take me and bring me back, I'll come back and I'll give you a third. Read your Bible very well. Jacob left with only a walking stick. By the time Jacob was coming, he had bounty. His, he didn't need his father's property. He didn't need anything from the house. You know what people want? They need capital. They need money. Will you give me something? You sit with a rich man and you say you need capital. Are you crazy? Utinyo, utinyo. Your head no good. Somebody must change your head. And the hand that is laid on you changes your head. The way people labor to become successful by hard work 
If you can labor like this, we can't read. You, like, the, the funny people is even these people who are unbelievers and they become believers. When you were unbeliever, you meet a sugar daddy. You see the things you do. The things you put do in the world just to get car. They come to God and I'm not saying go and misbehave still. Long. They come to God and they don't input any spiritual effort. They don't pursue. They don't chase. A man of God sends you. Like I, I said the thing. My office staff told me one lady was sick. She went to further her, her spine twisted. And when I was told me, I'm the type you don't talk to me, I don't mind you. Because grace doesn't pursue people. People pursue grace. If grace pursues you, it don't work. If grace pursues you, it don't work. It will be subjected to devaluation. So I sent a message to this lady. I said, how are you? I have never sent her such a message before. She said, daddy, I'm fine. I said, God bless you, and I left. Then my office staff said, ah, the lady is still sick. I said, ah, she said she's okay. I said, ah, but I told you. I said, you told me. She, she has not said anything. Then now she, she came to see me. He said, my spine. I said, aha, now we are talking. Then I touched the back. I said, go. The spine is okay. Now the truth is that when you don't pursue grace, grace will never come for you. And let me tell you something about grace. Grace works with seasons and times. You must be smart about I'll give you another example of season and times. In fact, I gave it. When <coughs> Bible Yedo, God made, Jesus made Peter the head of the church. I don't know if you remember. I don't know if you make him remember. But you know that Peter missed one portion of his. And I said that anytime you critique, you complain, you speak against people of power and authority. They might even lay hands. It's a curse. Ask my sons and my daughters. When I'm not okay with them, I see them, I hold their hand. So I walk with them in public. I intentionally do that. I just let the witches and the wizards know that it is between us. You can't come in. Are you here? You've gone somewhere else. Here is Peter. You are hungry. And God gives you a vision. In the vision, you see a, a, a sheet. I don't know whether it's a roofing sheet or a tray. And there was dog meat, camel meat, snake meat, all kinds of animals that the Bible says don't eat. I mean, Acts chapter 10. And guess what? Peter said, I will not eat it because it is unclean. And God said, don't call what I have cleansed common. You see, if you commonize what God has blessed, he commonizes you. Number two, the shit came down again. He said, this is common. And God told him, don't call what I have cleansed common. Because let me give you a scripture. You know what? In, 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 I said it in the first service. First Samuel chapter 2, I think verse number 8. It is God that picks the beggar. You see, when God is picking people to grace them, he picks people that will embarrass you. Oh, God. Like me. Oh, you are a beggar. Sometimes I tell people, people come to bridge and say that eh, it's rich people's church. I want to announce you, nobody came here rich. Ask all everybody here. Everybody came here as nothing. Today God has made them something. If you see all the cars you see here, nobody came here rich. I put my hands on my chest. If you are challenging me, let me see your hands. Listen, that's really. He raises up the poor. Out of the dust. Feels he lifted up the beggar from the dank and sent among what? Princes to make them inherit the throne. For the, now, give me the NLT. Where he says that he sets them up and honors them. You see, let me tell you that. God will pick someone that you don't like. And there you call the person come on. Do you know what has killed the church? We pray for revival. God, let the revival come. 
Then God raises Martin Luther. I say, ah, God, if you use anybody, Martin Luther, we have a lot of priests here. Raise them. They miss it. That brought the reformation. Most of the time we pray. You can pray, but you don't choose the vessel God uses. God chooses his vessel. <laughs> you can pray, God, I need money. Let Pastor Daniel give it to me. Lord, let Pastor Daniel give it. You will be there and you have a call from Ernest. You say, ah, but Ernest, uh, why Ernest? Ernest, can you meet me? Now, if Daniel will call me, I'll go. You won't go. He's the one that has the blessing. You pray, but God chooses who? <laughs> when the meat came down, he called the command three times. And when he got up, he was confused. That moment, he still went to meet Cornelius. But God gave the grace to Paul. Paul, you can take your seat. Paul got that grace to reach out to the Gentiles, not Peter. Because he rejected it. You see, sometimes the truth is that the Bible said, do not insult the king in your heart. A bird in the air will hear it. You don't have to say it to You think it, it is not. It's a spiritual code. I met somebody who was very sick. A big man. And they said, I should pray for him. I don't know what happens if you were there. The guy was sick. I said, can you? He was tall. So I said, can you go down? Oh, boo, ni ona. Ming bahane, enko to eshi. Um, boi, di ho. Mi pe mwe, mingo from. I said, I'm sorry. So I prayed for him. He said, it's not gone. I said, God will do it. You don't understand it. The Nigerian people, you are lost. Big man like me, I should kneel down. My said, Grace, what we ask you? Grace. You go to an office, and the person you see is your junior in school. Don't salute him and see if you get a contract. <laughs> I think I'm not preaching here. Ah, this one boy is a boss. Use your connections. Hey, junior. Hey, God has blessed you. Hey! I always knew you were a That is praise and worship. <laughs> Let's read. He lifts the poor from the dust. May God lift you up. You will be a shock to your generation. I am blessing somebody. May God surprise your generation. May you that is called an article of no use, then let it become the article of use. He sets them among princes. So God takes you like that and says, join this generation among princes, placing them in seats of honor. When a person is sitting on a seat of honor, you must learn to honor the seat. If not the person, the seat. Are you here? You've gone home. If you're angry, you can go home. Go with your offering. Don't leave it. You know me, I'm like that. We don't chop offering. Look at someone say, Is he talking to you? May God give you a seat of honor. May God place you in a seat of honor. May God place. Look at the vessel God used. Paul, the murderer. Who likes Paul? When Paul was coming, people said, be warned, this guy is a killer. When even God visited Ananias and told him to go and take care of this guy, he told God that God, I've heard by many, this guy is terrible. He went, laid hands on him, and he left him. Ananias should be the first person to have traveled with Paul, but he rejected Paul because of Paul's past. Let me tell you, God will not give you who you like. And I can see God is about to choose somebody. I know the sound of my voice. If you are the one, shout, it is me. Please take your seat. Hey, my wife has brought me dollars. That should bless her. Hey, Radia, go for us. I bless you, my wife. 
Go where I could never go. Be who God wants you to be. Let whatever is yours that they will not have given to you be released to you this week in Jesus' name. Amen. And also, please, we've not gotten there yet. Don't spoil the message. Lord, take this one to his next level in Jesus' name. We ask a message. Move cool it down. I don't need money now. Please. Please. Now hear me. Please, I'm serious. Oh. Listen, anytime God wants to promote you, he sends you a man. Anytime the devil wants to destroy, he sends you a man. The next person for your promotion is near you, but you don't value the person. I told you two weeks ago, is it last week Sunday, that Miriam was the reason why Moses didn't go to the promised land. He was in charge of water. The day Miriam died, water stopped flowing. Moses went to strike rock because that wasn't his duty. You never appreciate people around you until they leave you. And, and listen, Jacob went to stay with Laban one month. The guy was smart. I don't believe how. He called Jacob and said, you are not going anywhere. I have learned by experience of what? He has consulted his mediums. That since you join me, my business is prospering. The day Jacob stayed with the man for about 14 years, the day he was leaving, he had to bolt. And the man chased him. He got up in the morning. Jacob has carried his wife and children away. He still pursued him. Why did Pharaoh, why did Pharaoh still pursue the Egyptians? The Jews. They are gone. They were the one that was building the pitons and the ramses. They, they had grace upon them to build cities. So when Pharaoh got up and they were gone, Pharaoh still wanted them to be slaves because there's a grace upon their life. Receive their supernatural grace. Receive supernatural grace. I said receive supernatural grace. Any gift bestowed on you, receive grace for acceleration. Say, I tap it. I take it. You can be jealous. I don't care. Master, some of us, we know where we are coming from. When we used to speak, nobody listened to us. Who are we? When we started this church, they called us Garage Church. Even then, they say Garage Church. Sunday morning, pastors will surround the church. Pastors of the area. So that when you are going, you don't, you don't enter the church. They say we're garage. They were insulting us. One pastor can stand in, the, in his church and say that, don't go to that pastor. You go, how we cannot pastor place our passport for you to get visa? Eh? Is he an, a counselor? Not know it was an announcement. They came. Now the pastor stands up Sunday morning. The pastor is an usher standing in front of his great gate. When you are with her, because I learned a secret. God said in the book of Isaiah, He said, I will whistle. And when I whistle, my followers will follow me. There's a whistle God whistles. And when you are graced, when the whistle is sounded, how many of you have chased a baby before? And you go to the house and you don't want the mother and the father to know. So you give a whistle. May you hear that whistle. I said, may you hear that whistle. Do you know that you could have been better? If you have been a little bit humble. Lamentation chapter 3 verse 37. He said, he who speaks and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it. In other words, every pronouncement that is working, you Allow it. Who is it that see it? And it came to pass. When the Lord commanded it not. In other words, if the thing was spoken and it came to pass, God permitted it. So why did God permit it? Because there are some rules of, or in regulations that allows it to work. I 
tell people, never criticize your father and your mother. Because Abraham Abono, Umbobi. And any time you condemn your father and your mother, the thing they went through, you face it ten times. It's not the case. It is natural justice. You don't have too much wisdom to advise your father. And I was teaching in first service. Honor your father and your mother for it to be number one. Well. You know why you are not well? There is somebody who have dishonored. Number two, longevity. That it you may live long. Anytime you despise somebody God has assigned to you, you don't live long. I'm not preaching well. Oh. Hey, this is deliverance. You are delivered in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you this. That's my pastor. They know this very well. I teach them. I say, listen. A son fights his father's enemies. Doesn't fight his father. That's right. That's right. David fought Goliath. Never fought Saul. The throne you want to sit on, you can't dishonor it. <laughs> that is why you can assault your father, insult your father, insult your boss, assault your boss. They hand everything to you, company to you, everything to you. Three months, three years, it collapses. Because you had everything, but you have the grace. And grace is spiritual. It's not physical. I'm saying, ah, but it's an unbeliever. Ah, if you meet unbeliever, greet unbeliever. They carry a blessing. Look, there's nobody who doesn't have grace. Some have grace to run. Some have grace for basketball. Some have grace for football. Some have grace for preaching. Some have grace for healing. Some have grace for... You mention it. You, you know your own. Somebody do this. If I do this, every girl is my hey, grace. That has been reversed. You are supposed to be a show winner. For bringing women to the Lord. But you are bringing women to Satan. You have done it the grace. Am I speaking to somebody here? Let me tell you this. If blessings are not necessary from a man, and God can bless people without a man, why did first Samuel 16, God came to Samuel, and said, how long will you mourn for so? I rejected him. God told Samuel years ago, go and anoint David. He said, you won't go. He was still praying for Saul to change. One day, God came and said, hey, I told you, go and pray for Saul. Go and pray for David. Anoint him with oil and declare him as a king. He wasn't going. Anybody who has to come into your life to release a word, to release a prophecy over your life, may the heavens be invoked to instill them, to arrest them, to come to your dwelling. If for the one I'm talking to, receive it. How long will you mourn for Saul? Since I've rejected him, take your hand off for you and go there and go and anoint somebody there. He won't go. God told Elijah, go and anoint Elisha. Go and anoint Jehu. Go and anoint Hazel. Elijah went, took his mantle, put it on him. He didn't give him the anointing. Put it back on his head, said, follow me. And everywhere he goes, he said, don't follow me. I said, don't follow me. He was doing everything for the guy to be frustrated and not have the anointing. But that guy was determined to get it. The guy was determined to catch it. Elijah, Elijah was a wicked man. He put the mantle on him and he took it. And finally told him, if you see me go, you have it. Look, Elijah did the anoint Jehu. If 
Elisha came for over 19 years. The prophecy was waiting. Elisha one day called one of his servants and said there was a prophecy given to my papa in the Lord, Elijah. So you servant, take this oil, go to the camp of the army. There you see Jehu. Let him rise up from among his brethren. Somebody you must rise up. Somebody you must rise up. Somebody you must rise up. You can't, you are not supposed to be part of those people. Somebody is delaying to bring the blessing. You are not supposed to be part of those poor people. You are not supposed to be part of those rejected people. Somebody is refusing to come to your home. Somebody is refusing to come to your door. But and when that comes, see that. Look out for Jerry someday and go and make him rise up from among his brethren. And he said, when you put oil on him, tell him he's a king. And then run for your life. Elisha, your father Elijah didn't do it. You, Elisha, you didn't do it. But you see, sometimes you are waiting for the man of God to be the one to lay hands. But the truth is that the one who can break you through is an ordinary servant who is determined to be a carrier of your assignment and release it to your door. But you will not be humble to receive it. Read your Bible from First Kings chapter 19, 20, 21 to first, second Kings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Jehu was still a captain because he didn't know he was a king. He was still in the army as a captain. He didn't know he was a king because nobody, irrespective, had come to him. Said, I bless you. I anoint you to become a king. And today, I came here to bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord put his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Take your seat and give the Lord a mighty clap of faith. I put fire on anybody who is supposed to visit you this month of July. May somebody speak a word of blessing over you this word of July. Receive any grace you lack. I connect you to the grace you need. I connect you to the grace you need. You have the gift, receive the grace. I tell you, if your marriage is not working, look for people whose marriage has worked. Take them out for dinner. Ask them questions. Eat with them. And when they finish, eat their shopping. That is humility for grace. Look, I'm giving you keys. Oh. As I'm doing what? Let me tell you a story. When we met to build this church building, the people who came, the book long, people who knew book, they all left us. The only one person who left, he was the one who didn't say he knows anything. They call him still bender. But the still bender is the one who has took out the work hard for us to get to this level. Sometimes the person God will use. Uncle school down. Wabobra. Only Makola Jasso. He understands trade. Then your accounting principles you have learned somewhere. With no book long, he's making 100,000 Ghana cities a day. Selling tomatoes and onion. Guarding eggs and fish. And you meet him, and you meet him, and you have fat man, you are insulting this man. Can you, can you take care of me? Can you miss him? You are choking. You just shut a door. That's the grace you needed. It was better you bought something and said, Mommy, can you keep the change? So, oh, my son, I have enough. So, I just feel like giving it to you. You are so good. God bless you. Then, say, oh, my son, God bless you. You will live a long while. 
your parents will live long. Why? Things will go on well with you. Why? And then you are going, you don't even know what you have said. The person was the one God has used. All of a sudden, you are going to see that your business is prospering. The blessing is not only in the hands of a man of God. Men of God, we have our grace. But there are some people who have certain grace. Are you here? You've gone home. Let's do Acts 27, 23 to 25. I feel like ending. Every grace, listen to me, is carried by a specific angel. Actually, grace is an angel. Actually, if you read John 1, Jesus is called grace and truth. So one day, they said, I wasn't there. I heard it from a man of God, Bishop James Ha. He said one day they were in a plane. And once they were in the plane, the plane, they said they've lost all their engines. The plane was going to collapse. They could have spring. Then they said there was an Elijah or a man sitting in the plane. He was not talking. So they went asking, why are you not praying? He said, ah, Archbishop. A friend said, Idahusa is sitting at the back. That man is not dying now. If he's in this plane, we will all land. This is an unbeliever. Even Muslims, I have a brother here. Mustafa, he's a screechy man. He's a big man, but he doesn't want, I don't want to trust him. I met him years ago. He's a Muslim. He was, I said he was challenging me. Every time I said he challenged me at a meeting. I said, if I be a man of God, you be a man of God. He said, Tofia, I don't be. You know, you know the cows I kill? He said, I'm a Muslim. Ask him today, he wants to be a pastor. I didn't pray for him, oh. Did I pray for you? No, no, no. I said, you. I won't argue with you. I could have cursed him. Today, up anointing. <laughs> he said, if Idahosa is in the plane, Kai! Nothing will happen. There are some people, as long as you associate with them, your life is safe and sound. And listen, you must be wise to know such people. Look, look, there are some people, eh? I don't want to say this, there are some people. When my wife goes to visit them and comes, the romance in the house is serious. And she knows it. You, 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 I know me, I know people that say that all my sons are my daughters. If I see you walk with somebody and you come and your attitude change, I know that that person is a bad influence. You must, because everybody carries a spirit. Some people carry the spirit of the lateness of the hour. If you join them, you always be late in life. Lateness of the hour. My house, ask them, if I'm going somewhere, and I say 7.30, 7.25, I'm in the car. 7.30, the car is out. If you're not ready, I'm gone. To avoid it, my wife should have her own car. No trouble. Life is such that you must be wise enough to know associations. Some people, when you become your friend, you don't like going to church. Your prayer life goes down. There are some people, if you go around them, you want to pray, you want to fast, you want to serve God, you want to, because they carry grace. So in the book of Acts, Paul was being carried as a slave, hands and feet in chains. Don't despise people because they are poor. The fact that somebody is in chains doesn't mean he's not anointed. The fact that Jesus is on the cross that doesn't mean he cannot save. Even on the cross, he promised somebody, today you shall be with me in parallel. That other guy said, if you are God, save me and save yourself. He still remained there. 
Sometimes we only want to associate with people because they look good. Paul was in chains. His hands and feet and was a shipwreck. They have thrown all their food, all their clothes, everything overboard. And Paul stood up and told them, for there stood by me this night the angel of God whose I am and whom I serve. Listen to me. He didn't say he's serving the angel. He said he serves God. But the angel of God stood by him. That angel was assigned for Paul. And he came to tell Paul. Look at that. He said, say, fear not, Paul. Thou will be brought before Caesar. And lo, God have given thee all them that are with thee. This is your prophecy. The next one, 25. Wherefore says, be of good cheer. For I believe God that it shall be even it shall be as it was told me. Now give me NLT. This is King James. So give me 23, 24. Let's read. For last night, an angel of the Lord God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me. Look at something. An angel is standing beside you. Listen, most of you don't see some of these things until you are in trouble. You tie something up. You give him to the Philistines. The power of God will come on him. His family ties him up. No power comes. Because his family is not an enemy. That's why you must be very careful of family. Because you can hardly fight family. It's another message. He said, don't be afraid, Paul. For you will surely stand trial before Caesar. What's more, God in his goodness. This is what is called grace. Has granted safety to everyone sailing with you. 25. So take courage, for I believe God. It will be just as He has said. I came to announce to somebody that because you have arrived here, God will do it for you just as He has said. Amen. I activate your angel. Amen. You are not here. I stir your angel. I stand the angel assigned for you. I act. Oh God, 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 God. Listen. <coughs> if you go to the office tomorrow, <coughs> if you go home, tell your family, be of good courage. Amen. Encourage your family and tell your family, be of good. Today, my angel told me that as God has decided for me, so shall it come to pass. Know what witches and wizards have plotted for me. Am I talking to somebody here at all? Listen, if you don't say it, it won't come to pass. You must say it. You must boast it. Mr. Pastor, when did you prepare this summer? 325 this afternoon. Then he said, This is what we are preaching. As God has said, I said, What has God said? Numbers chapter 23, verse 20 and 21. For there is no divination nor enchantment against Jacob. Listen, I have received a command to bless. God has blessed and he cannot reverse it. Listen, nobody can pay bribe against your destiny. They can pay Balaam to come and speak. He's not speaking against you. It will be well with your soul. It will be well with your family. It will be well with your business. It will be well with your health. If I'm talking to you, shout, it is well. He said, no misfortune is in the plan for Jacob. It is not in God's plan for you to have misfortune. Not July, not August, not September, not October, not November, not December. You will not die. You will live to declare the work of the Lord. You have an assignment and that assignment you must fulfill. 
you have to give back to some children and those children you must give birth to your wedding is coming up your home is coming up your business is coming up you will take care of the orphans you will take care of the needy you will take care of the poor everybody in your family will depend on you oh Joseph so you cannot die they can put your name down and go and tell your father Jacob that you are dead but there you are you are succeeding in another man's land you are becoming a prime minister and they will come back and said we thought you were dead no misfortune I feel the anointing here it's in his plan for Jacob no trouble it's in store for Israel for the Lord is God come, come. for the Lord is God Take it for the Lord is God. It's with them. I don't care where I go. For his name's sake. Yet oh, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil. Please, I need the protocol to follow me before things go bad. Yet oh, I walk through. They say you can't go through. He said, You go to the fire, I'll be with you. You go to the waters, I'll be with you. He didn't say you will jump it. Someone said, This pastor, he likes trouble. No, I don't like trouble. When you don't like trouble, trouble troubles you. When trouble knows that you can defeat it, it runs away from you. There is no misfortune. Say there is no misfortune. Say there is no enchantment or divination that can work because God is with me. Read, everybody, read, confess to go. Don't, don't if you read your cup. You are in trouble. Put your name there. Go. No misfortune is in his plan for FD Yali. No trouble is in store for bridge ministries. Mention your own business. For the Lord, my God, is with me. He has proclaimed their king. Now, give me King James. I want you to understand. <laughs> Everybody read. We are going to do something there. Read, go. In Jacob. You know what? They want to use your past, your misfortune. The accuser of the prayer, they want to raise it up. But the prophet said, He has not beheld iniquity in every alley. Neither has he seen perversion in Israel. The Lord God is with him. And the shout of a king is among them. See, the shout of a king is in my midst. Let me tell you this. Anybody who doesn't know how to shout, a thief will steal from you. You know that thing? You know that thing? When a thief comes to your house and you are even afraid, and you say, Who is that? How many of you know that thing? If a thief is in the house, you are afraid, though. Baby, shout, huh? Who is that? You see, the thief is afraid. He wants to run away. There's a shout of a king. The enemy wants to keep you quiet. Shout. <laughs> the shout of a king. The greater one is inside you. There's and that person can rise up when you shout. Timidity is a sign of fear. need <laughs> you. Mami Pia me bo tio. Pia ka. Me be shu tu. See that the thief is going away. Speed. Is it true? 
Then you are afraid. The thief is stealing. And you are there. You are there. You won't say anything. You won't talk. No. You must shout. Let me tell you. When, whenever you are afraid, shout. I say, whenever you are afraid, do what? Whenever you are afraid, do what? Whenever you are afraid, do what? When you are afraid, do what? Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all ye people, and shout to the Lord with a voice of triumph. Listen, they want you to keep quiet. David said, Hey, Goliath, I'm going to kill you. I'll finish you. And Goliath said, Hey, am I a dog? David didn't say he was a dog. He looked at David's body language and he cursed himself and said, Am I a dog? Listen, 1998, I went to preach to Agri Memorial Secondary School. Then, Pastor David, you were a student, eh? The whole school. And me, those days, I still had my camera, but I didn't have camera, man. So I went with my camera. I still have all those videos. And I had to come and pass at that. Where was I going to preach? The following day, it was Sunday evening. And I was going to go for it, yeah, the following Monday to preach. So when I closed, they wanted me to sleep. They gave me a hotel. I said, I'm going that night. When you're not married, take some risk. And when I waited, no car was coming. So I got one, and that dropped me at Mankasim. Hey, I was standing there, no car was coming. I said, no car was coming. Also, I see some people, they didn't know I could speak. Somebody came to me, and we spoke English. They didn't know I could speak. They said, I don't go on, 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 I don't go on. They were telling themselves they are coming for my camera. All of a sudden, I held the camera in my armpit. And I began to shout and behave like a madman. You know what they said? Wabadam, 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 wabadam. They left me. When Saul. When Saul pursued David and David didn't have any place to go, he went to the Philistine and behaved like he was mad. Master, when you don't, your time is not up. Humble yourself, Master. Say, if they say you are mad, pretend you are mad. At least you will eat. Mad people, they don't fall sick. Have you seen a mad person sick before? They eat anything. They survive. Boiler food. They survive. God has a special grace for them. You are going to shout that you are a crazy person. I have some shout. If I shout in my office, they know something has happened. And when I shout, people batch into the office. Shouting creates attention and brings direction and lifts up a fear and makes your opponent think you are confident. When you are going to play football and you see the opposition, they are changing their mind clapping. You think they have won already. Is it true? It's not true. Then when you touch the ball, they say, oh, fu. oh, fu. and when they are playing, they will say, re. They say, oh, now very soon your players become awful. And the people who are shouting keep winning. And you wonder why King Faisal can draw one one with Asante Kotoko. (laughs) 
Are you ready to shout? This is what the prophet said. He said, the reason why no cash will work is because there's a shout of a king. There's a shout of a king in their midst. And as long as the shout of the king is there, no divination. Are you ready to shout? I won't tell you when to shout. When you're ready, you can shout. Oh, my head